Okay, now we're on chapter 10-1, customary length. And throughout all of this chapter, we're going to be converting um, various measurements such as length, uh, weight, capacity, time, and so forth. Um, we use different units to measure different sizes of something. For instance, um, if we're talking about how long until my birthday, my birthday is in November. And so we'd probably use months to give a rough estimate. Like it's April right now, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, it'll be seven months from now. But if I wanted to ask, you know, how long until I can watch Criminal Minds, and let's say that's a TV show that is playing tonight, and it's at 10 p.m., we'll look at what time it is, and we won't say, you know, how many months until I can watch Criminal Minds, it'll be how many hours. Um, so we'll use different measurements um, for different purposes, depending on the situation. That being said, um, being able to convert things is really important because maybe you want to buy something and they only sell it in yards, but um, your recipe or your instructions or, say, or something says something in feet. And so you're going to be able to have to convert different measurements in general. That being said, let's get down to the nitty gritty. This is something that you should have copied. And this is kind of like your cheat sheet. This is a standard. This is not something that you have to memorize per se. This is something that will always be given to you uh, when we take quizzes and tests. So for number one, if we wanted to convert 12 yards into however many feet, what we're asking is, what is something equivalent to this? Like when we're talking about equivalent fractions, it's something that's equal. What is 12 yards if we want to measure by feet? All you have to do is look at your cheat sheet here and look for something that has both yards and feet. So you can see here that the second one, the first one has feet and inches. So we won't use that because we want to use yards and feet. The second one has yards and feet, so this one will be the one we use. Um, this one has miles and feet, and this one has miles and yards. So we're going to be using the second one because they both have yards and feet. Now, we're going to use this statement, one yard equals three feet. So this is the statement we're going to use. One yard equals three feet. And we get this statement by looking at the cheat sheet, looking at the, you know, just the basic information. And when we apply it, we're going to match up the one yard to on top of the yard, one yard. We're gonna match up the feet, which is three feet on top of the feet here, three feet. And we're gonna ask ourselves, if we're going from one yard to three feet, are we getting bigger or smaller? From the number one to three, we're getting bigger by multiplying by three. And so that's gonna be our equation. To convert yards to feet, you're going to multiply by three. Oops, kind of went over the paper there. We're going to multiply by three. And so one times three, you're going to multiply the yards by three to get the feet. So we're going to multiply the 12 yards by three to get how much feet there is. 12 times three equals three times two is six. Three times one is three. 36 feet. And so that's how they got 36 feet. Um, let's do another one, number two, and we're going to do something in the very similar fashion. Number two, we have five feet equals, ooh, actually, you see how I kind of wrote this right underneath? What I want to do is I want to give myself some space to show my work, and so I'm going to rewrite that. Number two is five feet equals how many inches? Now look at how I have to show some work on top. Let's leave some room on top then. We're going to look for the one that has feet and inches. So if we start from the bottom of the list, this has mile and yards. That's not the one that's going to help us. This is miles and feet. So it does have one of the measurements, but it's not going to help us for this particular case because um, there's one that's better. This one has feet, but no inches. And so this one has both feet and inches. One foot equals 12 inches. If you have one foot, which is a ruler, that equals 12 inches. Now from here, this we just took from here. Nothing nothing made up. Um, it's using that cheat sheet that we copied down at the beginning of class. And so we're going to match up. 
the feet with the word feet and the 12 inches with the inches just right on top and we're gonna ask yourself if we're going from 1 foot to 12 inches are we getting bigger or smaller we're getting bigger we're multiplying by 12 because the 1 times 12 equals 12. It's almost like our x, y um, rules that we were solving in chapter 9 uh, near the end of the chapter. And so what we're going to do, in order to get from 5 feet to inches, we're going to do 5 feet times 12 equals the amount of inches. So 5 times 12. 5 times 2 is 10. We group the 1. 5, 6. We have 60 inches. So number 2 will be 60 inches. I want to show you one where we're not going to um, multiply, but have to divide. So let me look for one of those. All right. Let's look at this. Number seven. So we're going to skip all the way to number seven because this one's a little different. For number seven, we're starting with 150 inches. And we're going to have so many feet and something with inches. Now... We're looking at our measurements. We have inches, inches, feet. So, miles and yards, miles and feet, yards and feet, feet and inches. So we're gonna use this, um, this fact right here. One foot equals 12 inches. And just like before, we're gonna match it up. The one that has just inches is the one we're gonna put 12 inches. The one that has the feet and the inches, we're going to put the feet because that's the main, the first one, the main one. We're going to have one foot here. To get from 12 inches, the number 12 to 1, we're getting smaller. Look at how in the one before it, it was 1 to 12 because it was the feet first, then the inches here. It's the inches first, then the feet. So that that's why our mat, when we match them, the 12 inches goes on top. The foot goes on top. Instead of multiplying by 12, how do you get from 12 to 1? You divide by 12. So when you're going from inches to feet, you're getting smaller. Think about a ruler. If you have 12 inches, that's already one foot. You don't need as many inches, uh, feet as you do for inches. So you're getting smaller. You're dividing by 12. And so what you're going to do is do 150 divided by 12. Okay. 12 goes into 15 one time. 12 times 2 is 24. 12 times 3 would have been 36 and it would have been a little too much. Now we have 6 as a remainder. What that 6 means is you could put that as a fraction and put 12 and 6 over 12 and simplify. Or you could say that there are 12 feet because look at what we did there. We changed the inches into feet. There are 12 feet. And then we have these six inches left over. Our remainder is our extra inches because it wasn't quite enough to make a foot. If you think about a ruler, let me go get a ruler really quick. Oh, sorry about that. When you think about a ruler, it's like saying we were able to, if you have 150 inches, we were able to do this 12 times, but the next part is we only had six inches. It wasn't quite, le quite a foot yet. So we have 12 full rollers and then six inches of the last roller to make 150. Um, so 12 feet and six inches. From here, I want to show you one more type of problem, which is these compare ones before showing you and getting you started on the problem solving. So let us now move into number 10. And if I went a little fast on any of those, the best part about the um, video is that you could rewind, you could pause, and replay until um, it makes sense. And if I'm still not clear, I can totally make um, a second video like I did for, I think it was 9-5, I believe. So let's compare two things. If we're comparing 23 inches with 2 feet, we're saying which one is bigger than, smaller than, or equal to? Is 23 inches less than, greater than, or equal to two feet? Well, you can't compare them yet. Even though the number 23 is bigger than the number two, they have different measurements. They're asking, 
which one's bigger? If you have two rulers, one, two side by side, or if you count, you see these numbers here, 12. If you were to have 23 of these inches, you can't really compare them yet until you transfer them to the same unit. So what you could do is you could take your inches and change them into feet, or I'll show you a second way. 23 inches to two feet. We're gonna do this in two different ways. The first way we're gonna do it is we're gonna change the inches into feet. So we're gonna take 23 inches and turn it into feet. Oops, I shouldn't have made a circle, I should have made a square. So let's change 23 inches into feet. And by now we know 12 inches, one foot equals 12 inches. One ruler is one foot and there are 12 inches. That's why it goes up to the number 12 on this side. The other one's centimeters, so we'll worry about that in the later lesson. 23 inches equals one foot. One foot equals 12 inches. I mean, equals blank foot, feet, blah, blah, blah. So, match it up. The feet with the feet, one goes on top. The inches with the inches, the 12 goes on top. To get from 12 to one, are we getting bigger or smaller? Smaller, divide by 12. 23 divided by 12 goes in there. 12 times two is 24, that's too much. It only goes in there one time. You have a remainder of 11, which means it's one feet and 11 inches. Which one's bigger? Two feet. This is less than it. Because what they're saying is you'll have one roller and then you have a second ruler that only goes up to the number 11. Whereas with the two feet, you'll have two full rulers. And so this one is smaller by this inch right there. 23 inches is just one inch smaller than the two feet. Let's show you another way to solve it. So this is one way to solve it. A second way to solve it is if we were to convert the feet into inches. And so we're gonna use the same um, exact procedure, but instead we're gonna change the two feet into how many inches? And we know that one foot equals 12 inches, so we'll put the one foot on top of the feet and we'll put the 12 inches on top of the inches. And this time we're getting bigger. So we're multiplying by 12. When I say get bigger, I mean the one to the 12. One times 12 equals 12, that's our pattern. So two times 12, equals 24 and so two feet equals 24 inches no matter which way you do it you'll get the same answer but you're just getting it in a different way here you're saying you're looking 23 inches is less than 24 inches by one inch here you're saying it again but this time you're saying one feet and 11 inches one foot and 11 inches is less than two feet by one inch. So you can you don't have to show it both ways, but you either need to convert the 23 inches into feet and then compare the two, or you need to com uh, convert the two feet into inches and then compare the two. So choose which one you want to convert, the first number or the second, and once you do, put that answer on top and then compare the two. Whew. One last thing, and so I'm kind of rushing through this. I might redo this video. Um, let us look at the word problems now. Now, throughout the lesson, we've either been finding the measurement or we've been comparing them. Let's see what this is going to ask us to do. Marita orders 12 yards of material to make banners. If she needs one foot of fabric for each banner, how many banners can she make? see what's happening in this story. First off, I'm not sure if Murda's a girl or boy until I see the word she. So there's this girl who is buying material and she has a total amount. All together, she has 12 yards of this material. And what she's gonna do is she's gonna make a banner. And so here's our first banner, banner one. Here's our second banner, banner two. We know that she needs one foot of fabric for each banner. So this one banner is one foot. This second banner is one foot. We don't know how many banners she has. 
banner, I don't know, question mark. But we know that this is one foot. And so all you need to do is we can't just do 12 divided by one because look, this is yards and this is feet. So what we need to do is change the yards into feet. Before we could divide the top number, the, the dividend, the total, by the dividend, uh, no, the divisor. Before we could, um, no, that's the dividend. The dividend by the divisor, the dividend is the total, which is the top. Before we could divide 12 by this number, or whatever number this is, we need to have them the same measurement. So let's change these yards into feet. Let's change how much is 12 yards into feet. Solve this the same way that we solved the top ones, one through nine. Once you get this answer, this feet right here, replace this equals blank feet, 12 yards equals blank feet, 12 yards equals whatever this answer is, then you could divide this by one. Once you do 12 yards and convert it into feet, now you could divide this many feet by one foot. Let's look at what we're gonna do for this last one. And sorry, I'm kind of rushing through this. Remember the best part is you could pause and replay. Chrissy bought an eight foot piece of lumber to trim a bookshelf. So she has eight feet of lumber. Altogether, she needs 100 inches of lumber for the trim. So she needs 100 inches. Does Christy buy enough lumber? Explain. This one, we're not seeing how much she needs. They tell us how much she needs and how much she has. The problem is we don't know if it's enough. So that's gonna look more like the comparing. Does she have enough? Is it less than, greater than, or equal to what she needs? And so we have eight feet here. And we want to know if it's less than, greater than, or equal to 100 inches. Christy bought this much. This is how much she has. She has 8 feet. Altogether, this is what she needs. So you're going to solve number 17. The same way that you solve numbers 10 through 15. The only difference is asking, does she have enough? If this number is less than this, then she doesn't have enough. She needs to go back to the store. If it's equal to, she has the perfect amount, but she can't make any mistakes. And if it's greater than, oh wait, no. I blew it up. Let's start that again. She has. If she has less than amount, then she needs to go to the store and get some more because she needs more. If it's equal to, then she has a perfect amount. She just can't make any mistakes. But the best part is, if it's greater than, then that means she can make a couple mistakes and she still has a little bit to, um, to help her out if she messes up. So less than, she needs to go back to the store. Equal to, she has just enough. Greater than, um, then in that case, you know, she has more than what she needs and that's perfect. All right, let me know if you have any questions and I'm gonna to try to get 10-2 to you soon.